So the winds are blowing at about 40 to 50 miles an hour in my garden, which is why I'm sheltered in the greenhouse. Otherwise, you're not going to hear a word of what I'm saying. It's all just going to be wind noise. But it's the perfect opportunity to have a look at which of the hardy banana plants tolerate these strong winds best. Now, bananas are notorious for having lush, tropical style leaves right up until the wind blows and then they get shredded. But banana leaves have actually evolved some really cool features to mean that they maintain the important structural integrity so that the plant continues to be able to survive even if the leaves are shredded. So out of the three I grow, let's go and have a look at which are surviving these windy conditions best. Now we're gonna leave the serenity of the greenhouse and don't be fooled. Although this area of the garden looks calm and bright and still, this is the microclimate that I've created over the past few years. Now it's very much a jungle at the moment because of all of the heat and rain that we've had. The garden has filled out rapidly, but as you look up into the tropical canopy plants, you can see the wind is ripping over the surface of the garden and tearing up this hardy banana plant. And this one is Musa Basdu. Now, although Musa Basdu is one of the hardiest plants that we can grow against cold weather conditions, I find it's one of the most susceptible to strong winds. Now, you can see the leaves are absolutely shredded, but don't worry, this doesn't mean that they're going to die. This is the adaption that bananas have evolved to allow wind to blow straight through the leaves to keep that central midrib, that great big fat chunky vein that runs up the middle of the leaf, intact because that vein is what carries all of the fluids to and from the leaf in the process of photosynthesis, which is how plants feed themselves. Now, Musa sycamensis, which is a high altitude banana used to growing in mountainous regions, is also reasonably cold hardy, but I find the leaves are a lot thicker than that of Musa basdu, and Musa sycamensis, because of this, seems to stand up to strong winds much better and you can see here the bright red part going down the middle of this leaf is the midrib. And Musa sycamensis does the same thing as Musa basdu, although to a lesser degree. It does allow the leaves to shred horizontally to protect that central midrib to let the plant continue to thrive and push out new healthy leaves once the storm has passed. Now this is Musa cheesemanii, another rarity that I've had to grow from seed with its narrower leaf form. And I think the narrower leaves mean that the wind doesn't rip through it quite as much. Now, I am aware that this one is shorter and younger, so it's not um, exposed to quite as much of that strong wind, but so far, so good. It hasn't been ripped to shreds like the other two, but I think give it a couple of years, uh, when we get it up to the height of the rest of the canopy, we're really gonna see how it stands up to the strong winds. But look at Cheesemanii and Sycamensis with their colored undersides and how they kind of flash themselves at us as the winds blow through. I love growing plants that have a colored leaf underside because of this. It just adds an extra dimension to the garden and so many tropical and jungle style gardens are just full of green. So it's nice to have color in the foliage as well. Now, while we're in this part of the garden, you may have noticed my very tall papaya tree. Now this is actually growing in a pot and I'll just share with you a little tip here. So because it's tender, I grow it in a pot so that I can move it into the greenhouse to protect it in winter. And when I bring it out, I stake around the edge of the pot with bamboo canes just to help hold it upright on windy days, just like today. And you can see how still this tree is staying. I hate it when you're growing precious plants in a pot and then the wind comes and blows them over and snaps off flowers, leaves, or even the main stem. So do what you can to protect any tropical or precious plants that are growing in containers. Another tip is what I've done here. I've just grouped together all of these containerized plants like this beautiful Begonia luxuriens. Um, I've got Enceti bananas in pots here and a Brassiopsis mitis. And by grouping the pot, they're just giving each other stability and propping each other up. Just a couple of tips for windy weather blowing through your garden. But yeah, this video was about the bananas and you can see although shredded, they all still look fantastic, especially for a tropical garden here in the UK. Hopefully you found this video useful. Just a quick look around the garden in the middle of a gusty day. And if you did, please hit subscribe. It's the easiest way to support the channel and help it grow. And if you're interested in growing tropical and exotic style plants, then create a free account on our forum where there are chat rooms and groups and discussions all about this style of gardening. 
Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.